Hey everyone, Nigel and Luke here, and welcome to another edition of Crimes of the Week International. Authorities in Taiwan say that the sole survivor of a devastating car crash is facing charges this week after he and three others got into a reckless high-speed chase, one that was apparently the result of an argument over unpaid debts. The whole thing started sometime on the night of September 23rd, when the four people involved met up in the city of Taichung. They were apparently there to discuss unpaid debts which had been racked up by a 49-year-old woman identified only by the last name of Liao. Negotiations between the group quickly broke down, at which point Liao and the man she was with, a 50-year-old by the last name of Cheng, fled in their vehicle. They were followed by the others, identified as two 22-year-old men by the names of Xiao and Chu. As the two vehicles headed out of Taichung City and into neighboring Yunlin County, the situation became extremely dangerous. Both pulled off dangerous maneuvers on National Highway 1, with the cars reaching speeds of up to 190 kilometers, or about 120 miles per hour. This continued until kilometer marker 237, where things took a deadly turn. The vehicles collided, smashed into the highway's guardrail, and overturned. Three of the four people were thrown from the cars during the crash. The only survivor was Chu, who apparently was also the only person wearing a seatbelt. He suffered a broken collarbone and some lacerations, but was conscious when police arrived at the scene and was otherwise unharmed. Photos of the wreckage were shared by authorities following the incident, and honestly, the extent of the damage is quite shocking. At the time of this recording, Chu has been arrested and charged with suspicion of endangering the public causing death. He remains in custody. Officials in Argentina say that the body of an accused killer has been recovered this week, just a day after he allegedly murdered his own wife and father-in-law in what has been described as a brutal crime. The situation began sometime on the afternoon of September 28th, when police were called to a home in the Ara San Juan neighborhood in the northern city of Salta. Neighbors called 911 after they heard screams coming from the house, something they also allegedly heard the night before. When police went to the address in question, they made an awful discovery. The bodies of two people were found, later identified as 26-year-old Aylen Guante and her 65-year-old father, Juan Carlos. Both victims had been beaten and stabbed to death. One of them was found in a bathroom inside the house, while another was found lying in a bedroom. Almost immediately, police launched a search for Aylen's husband, 41-year-old Rodrigo Morales. Morales also lived at the address, but was nowhere to be found. The manhunt came to an end the following day when police found Morales' body inside of another home in the east of the city. He reportedly took his own life by hanging. It's now alleged that Morales killed his wife and father-in-law during the middle of an argument. The nature of that argument is unclear, though according to local media sources, Ireland had filed a complaint with police against the 41-year-old just hours before the double murder. Making the situation even more disturbing is that the crime apparently took place while Morales and Island's eight-year-old daughter was also home. After carrying out the killings, Morales reportedly left her there. At the time of this recording, authorities say that they are still investigating the situation and are working to uncover the full circumstances leading up to the tragic crime. Representatives from the British Transport Police say that an arrest has been made in connection with a disturbing and brazen child abduction case, more than a month after a man allegedly snatched a baby from her mother's arms on board a train. The whole thing took place at around 7.30 p.m. on August 17th, when the female victim and her baby girl were preparing to get off a train in the town of Worksop. As they headed towards the train's exit, they were approached by a man who they didn't know. The man allegedly pulled the infant from the woman's arms and proceeded to run off down the carriage with her. Though a relative was thankfully able to grab the baby back before any harm could come to her, the situation was understandably incredibly alarming. It became even more so when the suspect managed to get off the train and disappear before he could be detained. Last week, a CCTV image of the alleged perpetrator was released to the public in the hopes that someone might be able to identify him. Police now say that an arrest has been made in connection with the case. While authorities haven't released much in the way of details, the suspect has been identified as a 57-year-old man from Barnsley. 
This is apparently the same place he got off the train on the day of the incident. At the time of this recording, police have not identified the man by name, though they say he remains in custody. Despite this, anyone with information about the case is still being encouraged to reach out to the British Transport Police or anonymously through Crime Stoppers. Authorities in South Africa's Eastern Cape province say that they are investigating the aftermath of a horrific act of violence this week after 18 people were gunned down by a group of unknown attackers. The incident took place sometime on the night of September 27th in a small rural village near the town of Lusikisiki. According to reports, roughly two dozen people from two different families had gathered and were making preparations to attend a traditional ceremony. In a cruel twist of fate, that ceremony was supposed to be mourning a mother and daughter who had been murdered sometime last year. As the family members were in the middle of packing items for the event, suddenly gunshots could be heard coming from outside their homestead. Seconds later, doors were kicked in and a group of suspects began shooting at everyone inside. According to survivors, they were aiming for people's heads and were intending to kill as many people as possible. After massacring 13 people inside of this residence, the attackers allegedly went to a neighboring homestead where they killed four other people. One other victim died of their injuries two days later, bringing the total death toll to 18. Between the two crime scenes, there were less than 10 survivors, among whom several are still in hospitals. At the time of this recording, no arrests have been made and the manhunt for the suspects is ongoing. No motive behind the awful crime has been revealed, though police have said that they believe the shooters were known to the two victimized families. Moreover, some have claimed that the attack is a case of gender-based violence, as 15 of the 18 victims are said to be women. Government representatives have pledged that they will not stop searching for those responsible until they are brought to justice. They also promise to release further updates as new information becomes available. People across France are outraged and demanding answers this week, following the murder of a young university student at the hands of a convicted criminal, one who was supposed to have been removed from the country. The situation began sometime on September 20th, when the victim, a 19-year-old woman identified only by the name Philippine, was reported missing. The student had last been seen around lunchtime that day, when she was leaving the campus of her university in Paris's 16th arrondissement. She was supposed to be heading to her parents' home west of the city, however, she never arrived. A search was launched, one that came to a heartbreaking end the following day. That's when Philippines' body was found partially buried inside the Bois de Boulogne Park, just a few hundred yards away from where she was last seen. While no details have been released about the cause of Philippines' death, authorities say that she was sexually assaulted and murdered. During a subsequent investigation, they were able to identify a suspect, a 22-year-old Moroccan national identified as Taha O, who was the subject of an expulsion order from France. O was arrested on September 24th after he was tracked to a train station in Geneva, Switzerland. News of the crime has caused widespread outrage across France, particularly given the circumstances of the alleged perpetrator. According to reports, O had only just been released from prison back in June after he served five years for raping a student. Following his release, an expulsion order was issued for the 22-year-old, and he was sent directly to a detention center to await his removal from France. However, it's said that a judge freed him on September 3rd after the expulsion process got bogged down in administrative delays. O was ordered to keep in regular contact with police and stay at a specific hotel. However, by the time everything with the expulsion paperwork was figured out, he had disappeared. Situations like these, with orders not being carried out, are apparently incredibly common. According to the government's own figures, fewer than 10% of French expulsion orders are completed. In the wake of the tragedy, people across the country have spoken out about the crime, stating that more needs to be done to prevent situations like this from happening. Of particular concern is that the place where all of this happened is considered an affluent area of the capital. At the time of this recording, authorities are still working on extraditing the 22-year-old suspect back to France, where he will face charges of murder and other offenses. <music> 
Authorities in the Australian state of New South Wales say that they have an unlikely helper to thank this week after an unlucky kangaroo led them to a sizable drug bust. The whole thing started around 1 p.m. on September 27th when police were called to the scene of a single vehicle accident on the Sturt Highway, roughly 16 miles west of the town of Darlington Point. Officers arrived to find that the male driver of the car, later identified as Omar Akech, had hit a kangaroo while traveling down the road. As part of their investigation into the collision, police conducted a search of Akech's vehicle. When they did, they quickly found a large haul of marijuana in the trunk. In all, authorities say they recovered more than 44 kilograms, or about 100 pounds. Akech was arrested and has now been charged with drug dealing and possession of commercial levels of an illicit drug. Unfortunately, no update has been given on the condition of the kangaroo that he hit. Officials in China say that three people are dead this week and more than a dozen are injured following a terrifying knife attack inside of a shopping center. The incident unfolded sometime on the evening of September 30th inside of a Walmart supercenter in Shanghai's Songjiang district. It began when the suspect, later identified as a 37-year-old man by the last name of Lin, walked inside with a knife and began stabbing people at random. The attack was partially captured on surveillance cameras at the business, which reportedly show Lin strolling around the store's aisles clutching the weapon. At the same time, terrified shoppers run for their lives, while several injured people can be seen laying on the floor. When police arrived at the scene, Lin was quickly arrested, though sadly, not all of the victims could be saved. Three people were later pronounced dead after arriving at local hospitals, while a further 15 people suffered injuries of varying severity. At the time of this recording, few additional details have been released about the case. As with many similar incidents like this in China, it appears that the government quickly cracked down and censored images, videos, and posts about the crime that were being spread on the country's social media platforms. The crime happened as China enters its so-called National Day Golden Week, a week-long holiday celebration during which travel generally surges in the country. All officials have said so far is that Lin remains in custody and that their preliminary investigation showed that his motive was to, quote, vent his anger following a personal financial dispute. The investigation continues. Authorities in the Indian state of Uttar Pradesh say that they are investigating chilling accusations in the 30-year-old disappearance of a missing father after they were approached with horrifying new information by the man's youngest son. According to local media, the whole thing started recently when a 39-year-old man named Punjabi Singh showed up at a police station in the city of Hatras with an alarming claim. He stated that he had reason to believe that he knew where to find his father, Buddha Singh, who had been missing since 1994. Not only that, he said he was pretty sure his own family members were responsible for his disappearance. Punjabi explained that a couple of months back, he had gotten into an argument over money with two of his older brothers, Mukesh and Pradeep. Things had gotten extremely heated, at which point he said the pair had threatened him. The specifics, however, sent chills down his spine. They warned him that if he kept this up, they would send him to be with their father. The threats apparently brought back memories that Punjabi had been repressing for more than three decades. He told police that one evening back in 1994, when he was just nine years old, he and one of his other siblings had been sent to a neighbor's house for a sleepover. During the middle of the night, he was having trouble getting to sleep, so he decided to walk back to his own house. When he got there, he claimed that he had witnessed his father being strangled to death. The perpetrators were his older brothers, Makesh and Pradeep, their mother, Urmila Devi, and another local man named Rajvir. Neighbors assumed that he had become a monk at a temple somewhere, and the situation was never really investigated much further. However, when Punjabi recently came forward, he said he had information that could back up his claims. He believed he knew where his brothers and mother had hidden his father's body, underneath the courtyard of their home. On September 26th, police conducted an excavation at the property where Punjabi told them to look. After digging about eight feet down, they recovered skeletal remains. At the time of this recording, DNA testing still needs to be completed in order to officially identify the remains. However, police have suggested that they believe they are those of Buddha Singh. They have also issued arrest warrants for the four accused on charges including murder, tampering with evidence, and other offenses. 
though it's unclear if any of them have yet been taken into custody. As for the motive behind the crime, that's still under investigation too. However, local media reports state that it was well known that Urmila and Rajvir were having an affair. The situation is still developing. Before we wrap up, we'd like to take a second to give a huge shout out to everyone who has made it this far into the video. Seriously, thank you so much for watching. If you found today's upload interesting and informative, we'd be honored if you consider liking and subscribing, as well as hitting the notification bell and selecting all notifications to stay up to date with our latest releases. If you're looking for additional ways to help support the channel, we'd love to have you join us over on Patreon. Patrons get ad-free and early access to all of our content, as well as four additional stories per week for each of our Crimes of the Week and Crimes of the Week International videos. You can learn more at patreon.com slash crimezone, where you'll also find some of the fine folks whose names are currently on screen. All that being said, we understand that not everyone has the means to support financially, and that's totally okay. We appreciate every like, sub, share, and comment that you send our way. Once again, thanks so much everyone, and take care.